Hey everybody. So it's time to use our Play-Doh. I wrapped it in a plastic bag to keep the air away from it so it'll continue to be good. I'm going to split it into two balls because I'm going to use half of it for the first half of this worksheet. And I'm going to use the other half for the other, well, the second half of the worksheet. So you can see this is what I'm going off of, the knife cuts guide, Ooh, trying to make it straight. And we have here, this is what we call the large Mac stick. This one's actually called the Julienne. So we've created new names for each of these cuts just to make them easier for you guys to remember. But each one of these has a French name for it. So keep in mind, you go on the internet and look for a large match stick, you're not going to find it. So, but these are real knife cuts. So this one is a fourth and a, by a fourth inch by half or two to two and a half inches. So this is a cube that's a fourth, fourth inch cube, and then it's about two to two and a half inches long. This one right here is an eighth inch cube, and then it's about one to two inches long. Then we're gonna come down, oh, can't see it. We're gonna come down here, and we're gonna turn this into cubes. We're gonna turn this one into cubes. So I'm strategically gonna cut these and then place them here in this box, strategically gonna cut these, place them in this box, and then I'm going to turn these into these. And you'll see how that's going to work. You're gonna receive one of these, you're gonna each keep yours because of COVID, we're not going to accept these back so that we're not swatching germs at all. In the future, I'm going to laminate all of these and they'll be able to be reused so we don't waste paper. So I know I said I'm splitting this ball in half to use, but because I accidentally made two colors, I'm going to use purple and blue to make it that much easier for you to see the difference between the two cuts and then the cubes they create from those two cuts. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to have two different colors of Play-Doh, but obviously you're just going to need one cut, one cut, one color, one color of Play-Doh. Oh boy. I have not turned on all the lights in the kitchen. I think you guys can see well enough. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Let's just turn them on. Might as well. So to make, now, first of all, you have to have a proper grip on a knife. I use this chef's knife. Pretend this is the plastic knife you guys are working with. I'm gonna use a real knife because one, I don't have a plastic knife at home. They're all at the high school. And two, uh, eventually you guys are going to be using these when you do cook. So for the time being, you're gonna be using the plastic knives so that you don't harm yourself while trying to practice knife cuts because we're learning how to use a knife. So a proper grip, on a chef's knife is three fingers on the handle. This finger right here, your pointer finger goes on the blade. See how I'm just gripping it like this. You don't wanna extend past the blade here because you could cut your fingers. You get that tucked in so that you're not going to cut your finger and you're going to place your thumb like this. Basically, I'm pinching my fingers like this, but there's a blade in between. So then I can get my nice control. This has a really good control. I'm not wobbling. I'm not, I'm not, I am in control of my knife. There's another grip that you can use if you have small hands. I have massive hands, so I can use the, the big handed person grip, but you, just place all everything further back on the knife. So you come back here with it and you do your grip right here. The same exact grip you have on the blade, but you do it here instead. So this gives you good control as well. It's your preference, really. Some people with massive hands just like holding onto the handle because they don't feel comfortable holding onto the blade. So this is why we're practicing with the plastic knives. So I'm gonna start out with the purple dough. And I'm going to try to decide which direction is the easiest for you to see on the camera. Uh, just to reiterate, I have a wet washcloth on the counter and I put my cutting board here so it's not going to slip and slide. I wanted to make an oblong shape. So I kind of, you see, 
And then I'm going to, I'm going to get closer so that you can get a better look at just what I'm doing. I'm also going to use a rolling pin and I want to get this to a quarter inch thickness. Okay, so that's about a quarter inch thickness. And you can test that by holding your piece of paper up to it. And you can see, yeah, it's about a quarter inch thickness. So then I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to tip, plant your tip on the cutting board so that it's not going anywhere. And I'm just going to come down with it. Then I'm going to come over here. So I want it to be about two and a half inches long, two to two and a half inches. So you can actually take it if you want to be perfect and make yourself I put my nail right there so that it shows about two and a half inches and I can cut on that mark. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a range. And if it's a little bit bigger than two inches, two and a half inches. It's not the end of the world. So there we go. We have a nice rectangle cut here. So now literally all I have to do is cut down. Now I'm right-handed, so I cut this direction, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna cut this direction so that you can see what I'm doing. So I need to make this about a fourth of an inch wide. See how I plant my knife, my tip. Now, I am doing this backwards, so I'm going to show you how fast I can go when I do it the right way, or not the right way, but what I'm used to. So you can see that we have a nice, I don't know if my hand's in the way, you can see that we have this beautiful cube that is oblong. It's long. So I'm going to stick all of these inside that square and just leave it a rectangle and leave it over there. There we go. So I'm just going to stick these four in here. That way you'll have the teacher come around and take a look at the four that you've created. These I'm going to create the next step, which is, <laughs> wow, I totally just pulled them off of there. Oops. I'm going to take create the next one here because I've created this and I'm going to go directly down here. So then you'll see as I'm cutting why I'm doing that. There we go. So here is where, here I'll just turn this so it's easier for you to see. Here is where we're going to take our fingers and we're going to curl them like this because we don't want to accidentally cut ourselves. And then eventually you can go just a little bit faster once you get comfortable with it. So this one's going to make an odd shape anyways. So now that we have these matchsticks or the large matchsticks, I can simply come across here and cut it into cubes. So I'm going to put it this way again to make it easier for us to see. But take a look. We have our cubes like that. We'll put them on our paper group. And they might not be perfect because they never are when you're cutting carrots or celery or whatever it is that you're cutting. You're never perfect, but you're close enough. See how we just, we really don't even leave the cutting board with the tip of the knife. There we go. We have all kinds of little cubes. Now, if it weren't Play-Doh, these would come right apart from each other but I kind of have to pull them apart. So these you can just stick on your paper. You can mold it back together and start over again and practice more. This is something that we'll use when we make diced onion. Uh, we often do it when we're making soups. Uh, tomatoes, like if you're making salsa. So it's a good skill to have. So I'm just going to take this and smush it back together. And then I'm going to 
add this back to my bag so it doesn't want to dry out. Gosh, what am I going to do with this Play-Doh? Maybe give it to Faye. Now, I do have to say I like the homemade Play-Doh a little bit better just because it's not as sticky as the store-bought Play-Doh. So it makes it a little bit easier for you to work with it. So we're getting our, our shape again, our oblong shape. I will call it an oval, I guess. And this one is the eighth inch cube. Or well, technically not cube, match stick. We'll eventually get the cube. So I want to go thinner with this one. This is more like it's it's a small it's called a small dice when we actually dice this up. It's close to a mince, but it's not quite. There we go. Now if this were actual fondant, I could have these little rings that are on the ends of the rolling pin that force you to get it to the right size and be like really level with it. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing we did the last time. I'm going to use my finger to help control the knife carefully. Obviously, I'm going to have way more than I need, but again, this is just practice, so it doesn't really matter that you have a bunch. So there we go. Same exact thing, but this time we're going to go skinnier with it. See how I'm not taking the tip of my knife off? I'm going to show you from the side now. I'm going to keep this hand out of the way so that you can see what's happening with the knife. This is a rocking motion with the knife. And eventually you can get a lot faster with this the more you practice. The hard part is just keeping yourself perfect. See, like this one's a lot thicker, wider than the rest. So then we can do what we've done before. Well, first of all, we'll take a few to give to the worksheet. You want this to be a cube that is long, cube-like as in it's the same width here and here. But again, nobody's perfect, so it's not the end of the world if it isn't perfect. We'll put a few on our worksheet. Now, honestly, I'm going to take some of these away and work with less. I can always put these back on the cutting board and use them again. There we go. So now we can just take these and cube them, keeping this finger, the claw, this is called the claw method, out of the way. And then you have all these itty bitty dices. Some of them are a little bit bigger than the others. You want to be consistent and make them somewhat the same size as each other. Obviously, in a perfect world, they're all going to be exactly uniform, but then I'd call you a robot. <laughs> Especially those of you who have never done this before. That would be amazing and inhuman. Okay, we're going to pull these off, roll it all together. Now I'm going to carefully bring my worksheet over here. Oh boy. There we go. There they go. There they are. So really, it's not that difficult to do. Uh, this is just the foundations of cutting. This is going to get us making lots of different recipes. We do dice onions quite a bit. Sometimes we dice up the onions, freeze them, and save them for other recipes so that we don't have to waste the time later in the semester to make these or to dice up onions. 
We'll also be making that apple cider. You'll be cubing apples. You'll be doing this kind of cube, the bigger one. Uh, what else do we do? We cut up the uh, potatoes pretty small for mashed potatoes. Now, generally the reason we cut them up so small is because when you are in a foods class and you only have 45 minutes to cook, the smaller you cut those potatoes, the faster they cook. You're going to be making these mashed potatoes at home. You don't have to cut them that small. Just know that you're going to be cooking your potatoes to soften them up longer than if you were in class. So you save some time on the cutting, but then you gain back that time when you're cooking it. All right. So uh, those of you who are at home, if you want to practice with an actual knife, you're going to have to ask mom and dad if you can do that. I don't want to tell anybody that they should use a real knife and then somehow cut themselves. I don't want to be responsible for you cutting yourself. So don't. I also, we will also put out an alternative assignment for those of you at home who can't actually do this assignment. So keep an eye out for that. And I will also be putting on Google Classroom a question asking you, uh, those of you at home, if you feel comfortable or can cut at home, just answer it, yes or no, and I'll see how many people need that alternative assignment. But again, if your parents say you're not allowed to cook, this is my video proof here, I'll send it to your parents. If you go telling them that I told you to cut with a knife, if your parents say, if you tell your parents that I told you to do this, shame on you. <laughs>